Welcome to sermons from St. Paul's Lutheran Church of Minot, North Dakota. St. Paul's is anchored in the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and for the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My friends, we have all had those times in our lives where things feel out of control. Those times in our lives where we are knocked off center. You know those times where you find yourself without a job, or those times where you get the news that you have to move to another city to relocate. And there are even more difficult times that come our way. Alcoholism wreaking havoc on a family, adultery destroying marriage, the diagnosis of cancer, the loss of a spouse, miscarriages, and death abounding around us. Now, whether it is a problem at work that affects us, or whether it is substance abuse, or maybe the sting of death that does strike us hard. All of these situations together, they hit us like a ton of bricks. They turn our worlds upside down. When these tribulations happen, we learn real quickly how fragile our lives are. We learn how easily our lives can be turned into turmoil. We learn just how powerful sin is. And how sin grinds us down to the point where normalcy is a mere luxury of the past. Now when these tribulations of life come upon you, more often than not, you look for hope. You look for something to hold on to. Something that can help you weather the storm of the tribulation. Something that you can hang yourself upon in the midst of the struggle. However, it does not take too many troubles and situations and tribulations in your life to realize, though, that there is not a lot out there to help you. Unemployment compensation helps but cannot replace a lost job. Alcohol's Anonymous helps curve the problem of alcohol but does not eliminate the thirst for the bottle. Well, doctors, they prescribe prescriptions, but oftentimes they cannot cure the disease. And on and on it goes. And so you may find yourself like that woman, that Canaanite woman in our gospel reading from today, at the end of your ropes. Indeed, like that Canaanite woman in our gospel reading from the gospel of Matthew, you may find yourself at times in life with no other place to turn. Which is why, my friends, many individuals return to the church when all hope is lost. But like the Canaanite woman in our gospel reading, we are caught off guard when we are not met with a comfortable and peaceful solution to our problems in the Lord's church. We're caught off guard when we are met with the opposite, the icy silence of heaven. You see, we often come to the Lord in our troubles, expecting an either an immediate quick fix solution or at least some sympathy from the Lord. But we are never prepared, my friends, 
to get that icy rejection from the Lord. You would think that Jesus would have embraced that woman in her distress, as we heard. For she was actually croaking like a raven in her distress, shrieking for help. But Jesus does the exact opposite. You see, he seems to give her the cold shoulder. He did not answer a word to the woman. He remained at a distance, as if he had a barrier between himself and her. Now, dear friends, we have all experienced this reaction at one time or another. You know those times that we have where we need the Lord the most, but it seems as if he is quiet and distant. But why is it this way? Why did Jesus give the Canaanite woman silence? Why did he give her the silent treatment? Well, the answer is quite profound. You see, Jesus is refining and strengthening the woman's faith. Yes, Jesus, he's actually driving that faith deep into her heart so that this faith becomes strong and firm. In other words, Jesus was not displeased with the woman's faith, and Jesus certainly was not apathetic, but he was refining her faith with silence. Now, the same thing is true for you and me. You see, when the Lord is most quiet, or when he seems to become silent as stone to us, this can cause us deep and great distress. As a result, you and I imagine that the Lord is distant or angry from us. Furthermore, it may seem that the Lord conceals his grace and his help in our time of need. And what is even more troubling is in the midst of these silent times, the devil, he comes and he tempts us to despair. The devil comes and he whispers in our ear. He says something such as this. You see the Lord, well, he he really doesn't care for you. He probably can't even hear you cry for mercy. He probably is even happy to see you suffer. Now, contrary to what we might feel, the Lord is not trying to give the devil a hall pass to spew forth his deceptive lies into our ears, but rather the Lord is strengthening our faith. By allowing us to come to the end, I repeat, coming to the end of ourselves. So that all that we are left with is the promise of the word. Now dear friends, keep in mind that the nature of faith is the ongoing awareness. Yes, the awareness of the terrible sin condition that we have. An awareness of understanding our unworthiness, our weakness, our frailty before God and in the midst of this world. But we also must remember that faith is also an awareness of the salvation that God freely gives to us on account of Jesus' life and his death and his resurrection. That is to say, faith knows that we are indeed great sinners. And faith knows that we have an even greater Savior. And so to strengthen this faith... The Lord must bring us to the end of ourselves, often through silence, so that when we look around, we will see nothing that we can cling to. In the silence, we won't even see God as a quick fix solution. You know, someone that we can just use to fix our problems and discard when we're done. But instead, amid the silence, with nothing to cling to, This faith remembers the promises of Christ in his word. Now we must keep in mind that when the hardships and the tribulations are the worst, indeed when they are the worst, it will be very difficult for you, just as it was difficult for that Canaanite woman. However, when the going is tough and your faith is tried, it is in these times that faith in Christ shines brightest through you. Yes, in the struggles, there's only one thing to do, and that is for this faith to cling to Jesus all the tighter. This faith to hold Jesus and say with these words, Jesus, whether I feel close to you or whether I feel far from you, I will not leave you or doubt you because you love me. You're my only help. You're my only hope. You are my rock in the midst of this chaos. On you I will rely because you went to the cross for me and you died so that I might belong to you forever. You have told me this in your word. To you alone then I will cling. So Jesus, do with me 
as you will. For I know that I'm yours in good times and in bad. I am with you in life. I'm with you in death. For you promise to never leave me and never forsake me. And after the testing is done, my friends, and after your faith has been strengthened, you will then begin to learn that it was a part of the Lord's plan all along to care for you, to strengthen your faith. Indeed, you will learn that through the struggle, you were strengthened in the faith by learning to rely just a little bit more on Jesus and his word of promise for you. Now, with that stated, once the struggle is gone, is it gone for good? I'm afraid not. You see, the Canaanite woman in our text, she is actually a picture of the Christian church, a picture of us. Yes, a picture of St. Paul's. She's a picture of the church living by faith, always crying out, always trusting, always being refined and strengthened by Jesus. This Canaanite woman is a picture of you. She's a picture of me coming into the sanctuary every Sunday, confessing that we are poor, miserable sinners in thought, word, and deed, yet boldly rising together and going to this altar to receive sips of wine, pieces of bread, the body and blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. The Canaanite woman is a picture of us coming to the throne of grace in faith, with all of our suffering, with all of our trials, with all of our tribulations, clinging to Jesus and him alone. This, my friends, is the great struggle of faith. Faith does only one thing. It clings to Jesus and his word and sacraments in spite of everything else around us, in spite of our feelings, in spite of our circumstances. Faith hangs tightly to Jesus and it never lets go. It hangs on Jesus because he's the one who loved us all the way to the cross and all the way to the empty tomb. So remember this day, dear baptized saints, that as Christ's church, you and I are always crying out to Jesus by faith. Like that Canaanite woman, we're always trusting. Our faith is always being put to the test to be strengthened. Again and again, the Lord strengthens our faith all the days of our journey until at last we reach our heavenly home. So when the world throws its worst at you, by faith we cry out with the whole church this, I take comfort in you, Christ. I am sure and certain that you will not fail me. Your will be done. And when silence comes upon us in the times of struggle, we cling all the more to the Lord's promises and his word and sacraments, saying again, I take comfort in you, Christ. I am sure and certain that you will not fail me. Your will be done. This is faith. This is faith that clings to Jesus. Faith that is continually strengthened and refined to call upon Jesus and rest in him regardless of circumstances. This is the faith that you have. This is the faith that you have in Christ that has been given to you as a gift. The faith that is created, sustained, and strengthened by Christ alone. In the name of Jesus, amen. strong word he speaks us righteous bright with thine own holiness thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon you can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from pastor matthew richard's blog at www.pastormatrichard.org or visit saint paul's website at www.saintpaulsminot.org The Lord bless and keep you.